transparent. Joel Gilbert is a best-selling documentary filmmaker. His latest film, Utopia, exposing the fact that it's not a utopia that they're building, uh, is available at InfoWarsStore.com. I should add that and basically gets into the whole socialist journey that people have gone through in this country. Utopia. There's no place like Utopia is the full name of the film. But he's not here so much to talk about that today. You need to get the film and give it to young people and others, folks. That's how we win hearts and minds. You can unlock somebody's mind with one piece of truth. It can dislodge an entire mountain of disinformation and uh, fraudulent propaganda. I wanted to get Gilbert on because it was a little week or so ago. Remember, a Congress pointed out that his connection to who we believe is Obama's real father, Frank Marshall Davis, and more and more of what's in Gilbert's film we're seeing in mainstream here and there, almost like the power structures dangling it out there in these kind of wars. We know there's even wars in the establishment. You're hearing criminal stuff about Hillary and her illegal emails and Jeb Bush and illegal Nigeria stuff, lying to the FBI, not declaring income. So, so, so there's infighting within the system as well. Uh, but I'm seeing a lot of that starting to come out right now. Then you've got all these announcements and you've got world government being pushed. And transhumanism and smartphones spying on you and all the rest of it. And meanwhile, you got George Soros running around spending $33 million to cause basically anti-police riots around the country to destabilize the nation. So Obama can pose as a savior and come in and federalize police, which they're now announcing. We predicted this. So what's the next shoe to drop? They're power grabbing everything. The internet, the borders, the police. Uh, Joel Gilbert, what do you think's going on? You're a big Obama expert. You've traveled the world to track this guy. What do you think's going on, Joel Gilbert? Well, I think there's an actual roadmap uh, that Obama is following from his mentor, uh, Bill Ayers, and of course, Bernadine Dorn in the Weather Underground from the late 60s. They wrote a document called Prairie Fire. And the essence of that was using a line from Mount Situng, which was a single spark can start a prairie fire meaning one incident, one agitation can start an entire revolution. And you see Obama agitating prairie fires, such as he did in Ferguson, uh, the Trayvon Martin case. Uh, he tried on the guns up in uh, Newton, Massachusetts. He's always agitating. He's a, a professional agitator. He was trained as an agitator in Chicago at the Midwest Academy. He was a trainer for ACORN. And I think he had no interest ever in becoming president of the United States or in being president. His only interest was using the pulpit of the presidency to agitate the country and divide and polarize the nation. It is only about uh, 50 years ago now that, uh, 45 years ago, that Bernadine Dorn and the Weather Underground declared war on the United States. And I think when you look at Obama's uh, policies the last few years, his agenda for the next two years, I think it is open warfare against the United States to degrade and uh, harm and eliminate the foundations of the Constitution. You're right, and it's like it's, it, it's some type of weird Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure where they're caught in a time loop because they're using an old Soviet playbook to bring down the U.S. and Israel and Western Europe long after all that collapsed. These are crazy people. I mean, they're in control right now, and they're trying to shut off the industrial base and start a civil war. These people are mentally ill. Well, the way they accomplished it is based on a, a learning curve. Uh, Bill Ayers and Obama's mentors in the Weather Underground would look people in the eye in the late 60s, and they would say, we want to destroy you. We want to bring down America, replace the Constitution with a communist manifesto. We want to send 50 million of you to re-education centers and murder 25 million of you. And have the UN basically occupy the US with international forces. Correct, they wanted to occupy the United States with Soviet, Chinese, North Vietnamese, North Korean and Viet North Vietnamese forces. They, nobody followed them uh, because it turned people off because it was so evil. They ended up going to jail for murdering policemen. Uh, they went into the underground for 10, 15 years. When they emerged from the underground in the early 80s in Chicago, and became Barack Obama's mentors, uh, they taught him the lesson. The lesson was, instead of looking people in the eye and saying, we want to murder you, look at them in the eye and say, we want fairness, we want to help you. And by the way, I had um, Bill Ayers on about a month ago and he literally 
said he wasn't a communist, said I was making it up, said none of this ever happened. And, and so they're now in that mode of acting passive, acting friendly, acting non-threatening. Right. And I could tell he was reading off a script. Right. What they do is they change the terminology. Instead of we want to murder you, the terminology is folks and families. But the agenda is exactly the same. It's to use the support of people for helping them to, in fact, uh, destroy them. And we've seen over the last 30 years, the Democrat Party has been taken over by these radical Marxists out of Chicago. And today the Democrat Party is a radical socialist party. And in my film, Dreams from My Real Father, which you mentioned was, was back in the news with Rudy Giuliani, mentioning that Obama's mentor was a, the communist uh, party USA propagandist, Frank Marshall Davis. Of course, in my film, which is in your store, still Dreams from My Real Father, I think I present a mountain of evidence that Obama's real biological father, who became his ideological mentor, was in fact the Soviet agent, Frank Marshall Davis, who indoctrinated him into this radical ideology in his entire youth. And today we're seeing the, unfortunately, the end game of a radical in office. You know, when I heard all this six, seven years ago, I didn't believe it, but I, there's no way it's not true and the evidence is overwhelming. We are in so much trouble. And what were, are the elite thinking doing something this crazy and reckless? Well, why did Nero marry his horse? Why did, uh, or was it Caligula married his horse? I guess Nero did stuff even worse. And these people are just insane, out of their minds, but they have a will to power, so they're taking over. Joel Gilbert's our guest. Stay with us. I'm really Joel Gilbert, the maker of There's No Place Like Utopia, an excellent film available at InfoWarsStore.com. And I know you, the listeners, know most of this stuff, or more than I do in some cases. You need to show it to friends and family. You need to have your church show it. You need to really fight the collectivism that's unfolding. JoelGilbert.net's his website. It's excellent. Uh, Joel, continue in the short segment, long segment coming up, and then we'll go to some calls. Understanding the power grab we're seeing, what do you think from your expert research the agenda is in the next two years? We've seen this uh, game plan uh, play out. It's not a new agenda. It's the uh, same old story where a, a radical leftist Marxist group takes over a legitimate political party like the Democrat Party tricks the party itself into thinking that they're mainstream. Obama told the country he's going to cut the deficit in half. Obamacare is not a tax. He'll obey the Constitution. It was a mainstream candidate with an agenda that he never intended to implement. That's why in my film, There's No Place Like Utopia, I compare Obama to the Wizard of Oz because he was a charlatan from the get-go. And his intentions uh, were never good. Uh, when Dorothy gets to the, witches, to the uh, Emerald City, the Wizard of Oz sends her to the witch's castle. She's taken prisoner in the dungeon. And that's what's happened in all the progressive cities throughout America that I travel to in the film, Detroit, Chicago, uh, Denver, Newark. People are literally living in these witch's castles, the dungeons of progressivism, where they have 50% unemployment, drug cultures, no fathers, no business. They have brought this devastation upon America through these progressive policies. And they only succeeded because they manipulated and fooled not only their own party, but the American people into supporting them and giving them power. Once they're in power, they use the tools of state, like the IRS, the control of information. Unemployment is only 5%. Well, that's what so I found whenever I've been around socialist and communist at events over the decades. I've been around a lot of them at you know, all sorts of behind the scenes you know, democratic conventions. They're really like criminal bank robber types like like felon types i've been around before that are really creepy and have bad will towards people and right. behind the scenes they'll go listen when we take over we're going to kill everybody we want blood they really are demonic villains but then in the service like i'm liberal oh. i mean they are just so sick right they've uh, the entire program of progressivism is based on disinformation and that's what the Democrat Party and the White House engages in today. Uh, I said the unemployment is 5%. There's voter suppression, a completely made up story. On and on, the entire uh, agenda is based on a manipulation and providing false information. It's disinformatia, Soviet era propaganda coming out of the White House. And you'll see the Democrat candidate, whoever it's going to be in 2016, is going to say that we have uh, racial inequality and income inequality. And there's a few 
fortunate people who are controlling uh, all the economy, and that's why everyone else has to rise up and support the Democrat Party. So it's a type of mafia. It always has been. And they simply use the benefits of the state to enrich themselves while creating one large lower class. Socialist economies don't have a middle class. They have an impoverished society with political elites who control the wealth. They're very medieval. I would say so. They're a, uh, you know, it, it's, a, it's a group of people that want to control others. And to be willing to lie and lie about everything, it just shows you the evil nature uh, of those who would lie to take power and then use the tools to suppress everybody else. It's a very evil plan, and we're seeing it sure. uh, not, not in uh, you know, 1940s, 1950s China with Mao sending 50 million people to, to being starved to death in collective farms or the Soviet gulags. We're seeing the disinformation in modern America. We're seeing it incrementally just deindustrialize the country. And again, then we have the Republican leadership, a bunch of blue blood fascists who side with the Democrats. I want to talk about that when you when you come back. Talk about okay. the film, get into any other subject you want to cover, and then take phone calls uh, from a lot of different listeners. Joel Gilbert's our guest. I'm Alex Jones, InfoWars.com, PrisonPlanet.tv. Stay with us. So please go to the site and get uh, the powerful documentary film, There's No Place Like Utopia by Joel Gilbert. I want to go back to Joel Gilbert now to look at what's happening how successful has Obama been? Opposition is mounting. What do you expect him to do next? Uh, what are you most concerned about? I mean, kind of as a play-by-play, -play, Joel Gilbert, where are we as a society right now from your perspective? Well, first taking Obama, uh, of course, there's uh, endless commentary for the past several years about his uh, failure as a president, failure in foreign policy, failure in the economy. Uh, from his point of view, which is what I've been tracing and documenting in my films, from his point of view, he's been very successful because all of this was an intentional plan from the get-go, uh, bankrupting uh, the, the country, uh, doubling the deficit, uh, in letting the country be invaded by illegals, which includes tremendous amount of criminals. And here in California, 40% of all prison inmates are illegals. We've got the Norteños, Sudeños, all kind of gangs. So these are the people coming across the border in addition to Obama's so-called striving immigrants looking to work hard. Uh, so this has been the agenda to divide the country, uh, to break up the United States was the, the dream of the SDS, Weather Underground and the KGB from the get go uh, to allow these forces to maintain power in chaos domestically and the evil bad guys abroad to be able to extend and project their power without American influence uh, in their way. Uh, the agenda of the Islamist movement, whether it's ISIS or Iran, is the same as the Marxist movement. They have a lot in common, and that's why they work together. They both view Western capitalist systems, free markets, free speech, as the number one obstacle to taking power. Therefore, together, they view Western society as the number one target on the path to salvation. Uh, in Islam, worldly events are an affirmation of faith. Uh, therefore, Iran attaining a nuclear weapon and being able to not necessarily even use it, just use it as a strategic umbrella to continue their hegemony through uh, taking over of, of country by country in the Middle East, whether it's Yemen, uh, extending their influence to Lebanon, Syria, and, and elsewhere. It's a signet of power. It's, it's a, a way, if you, if you have a, a nuclear capability, you can then, your conventional forces have free reign because no one will, will attempt to stop you. So the Obama agenda, unfortunately, uh, according to, from Obama's point of view, is unfolding very, very successfully. Uh, he's divided the country along economic lines. I agree. Lines, Obama has lines. been a devastatingly successful globalist socialist. And then you've got the big money banks funding him, thinking that once there's a tyranny, they'll, everybody's fighting for the ring of Mordor. All these different special interest groups... They're all supporting tyranny because they think they're going to get greater power out of it, when instead it's destroying stability and destroying a future for humanity. I mean, it's so sick. Unfortunately, people don't realize that uh, the utopia uh, on Earth is uh, America before Barack Obama, America as a constitutional government with uh, fr free markets, free speech, limited government. 
This is as close to utopia as we can get on Earth. Look what our so country produced. The most of the patents, most of the devices, higher standard of living, highest rates of savings. And as soon as we left free market, we become a hell pit. Most yeah. unhealthy, highest debt, highest, exactly. all sorts of problems. Exactly. But Obama has to lie about it. Michelle Obama, Barack Obama, now the entire Democrat Party. They cannot justify radical change if everything is going great. If we have free markets and independence and, and a great economy, they have to tell us that everything is broken. Immigration is broken. Everything is unfair. Everything is unequal. And their solution is give us the power and we'll make it right for you. We'll fix everything that's broken. Now, the way they fix things that are supposedly broken is they want to completely destroy them so they can rebuild it from scratch, this socialist utopia, which we know from history is nothing but a hell on earth. That's right. we got a few minutes left with Joel Gilbert here today. Uh, other points you'd like to get across, warnings you'd like to get across to people. Uh, and, and then first, my question, if he's been so successful and he's now power grabbing on every front and the Republican leadership won't block him, what do we do? I mean, remove Boehner? There is a move to do that. How do we get sanity back into Congress? Well, we were supposed to have a balance of power between the executive, legislative, and judicial branches. Unfortunately, the uh, legislative branch, the Republicans, the establishment Republicans, have capitulated or remained in fear of opposing Obama. This has been a colossal failure of the, the balance of power system. The judicial branch has done almost nothing. We have a, a little a potential a halt in the legal immigration uh, grab uh, policies of Obama in Texas. But by and large, the balance of power system has fallen by the wayside uh, against Obama's executive uh, power onslaught. grabs on, 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 on onslaught on every level. So I think the best and perhaps only and last hope is to uh, replace the uh, Obama with a strong conservative uh, president in 2016 that can go about reversing all the damage and all the lawlessness that Obama has brought to America and, t and pull us back together and strengthen the rules and laws so that if a radical socialist were to take power in the executive branch in the future, that he would not be able to overreach uh, and extend a lawless reign in trying to destroy the country. Well, it's the special interest combined with the socialists that allows this. And so many big corporations are lined up giving money to support a consolidation of power because, again, they think they'll get the Ring of Mordor. We need to throw the Ring of Mordor back into the crack where it came from and stop using it. They don't, I, yeah. no, they don't understand. They don't understand to this day. Uh, there's, some people are coming around. Rudy Giuliani came around a little bit. I've talked to many U.S. senators and congressmen who've all seen my film. They know what's up, but it's hard for the main, mainstream media is unwilling to tell the truth, which is that Barack Obama is a radical. Well, he look at how Giuliani came out and said Obama doesn't like America and is destroying it, which is true. And I'm not even a Giuliani fan. Uh, for, you know, I mean, he was compared to most Republicans, pretty liberal. And then CNN had the headline, the end of Giuliani, the fall. It was everywhere. He's horrible. He's discredited. I mean, it's just like they fired for Monday Night Football Hank Williams Jr. because he criticized Obama. This is an anti-free speech cult. And so that's why Congress is so scared of him Correct. Is, is, is because they're scared of being you know, attacked. But the mainstream media doesn't have the power it used to have. It's more a paper tiger whose bark is bigger than its bite. It's toothless. I think people should want to be attacked by the establishment. That's why Rand Paul won in Kentucky, was because they came after him. People need to wallow in the enemy's attacks instead of running from them. Well, there's only a very few politicians that are willing to do that because they're looking to hang on to their job. They don't want to be ridiculed or isolated, which is part of their game plan. But Giuliani told part of the story. Obama doesn't love America. He was raised by radical communists. The other part of the story, if you take it to the next level, is uh, Obama is, is one of them. Only a radical communist uh, would hate America, would try to destroy America. Uh, oh, the biggest story that still has to be told in the mainstream media is Barack Obama is all lies. Everything about his personal background was a lie. Everything about his political agenda was a lie. And the biggest fraud in the history of this country was perpetrated upon the electorate by Barack Obama 
backed by the mainstream media that simply repeated right. all his lies. You're right. You cannot make up the magnitude of the screw job. I, I mean, I can't even believe it. I'm supposedly the big conspiracy theorist. Uh, I, I mean, I saw the Washington Post and like three other publications last Friday. People were like, give us the FCC takeover document. And they, they said, oh, conspiracy theorists, you don't get it. So, so it's a fact they're keeping it secret. It's a fact it gives the FCC control. It's a fact Obama's behind it, and Hillary and Pelosi love it. It's a fact all these other commissioners say that, that have seen it, it's a power grab. But now we're five, six days into this, and we still can't see it. And when we ask for it, we're a conspiracy theorist. I mean, talk about disinformation, Joel. Yeah, look, uh, uh, Obama's first assault on the Constitution was his refusal to le release his birth certificate. When he got away with that, uh, he got away with Fast and Furious. When he got away with not releasing the documents for Fast and Furious, he got away with using the IRS and weaponizing it against political en enemies. Because we've never been able to hold Obama accountable for the lack of transparency, for the lies, for the deception, is the reason he just continues on and on. Now and he's accelerating, it's, it's, federalizing police, opening borders, banning bullets. I mean, what's that's the last question. What's the next shoe to drop then? I mean, what, it's incredible. I mean, if, if, if he's accelerating towards light speed right now, we're about to really see some incredible power grabbing. Well, the goal is to create a situation where they can manipulate and control the uh, future elections, presidential elections, congressional elections, to create a permanent socialist state in America and with people kind of never realizing how it happened. Nobody voted for any of this. All of Obama's policies were uh, an agenda that he hid from the public. He threw his voters under the bus, including all the African Americans. Double unemployment. Vote. Notice now Google announces they're going to let Snopes and other groups connected to Soros decide what's credible and isn't and basically delist websites. You know they're talking about us. So, so, so they're coming after everything right now, folks. You better promote the film, No Place Like Utopia, but get it, show it to people. You better support Infowars.com and send people the links to the show because we're not going to have Google and, and the search engine doing it. We're being shut down right as we grow and explode because we can beat these people. But nothing can stop Humet. Nothing can stop human intelligence if you promote InfoWars and other liberty-based media every day to your friends and family and others and do creative things. Nothing can stop people power. Let's kick these communist globalist butts together. Joel Gilbert. Uh, my point then is simply that um, middle America, church-going, hard-working people will never buy into the progressive agenda. And the left has known this from the get-go. Better the clingers, they're coming after us, they're going to call us terrorists. Right, so their entire agenda from the get-go was to eliminate the middle class, destroy uh, the connection between religion and society, uh, destroy the health care, destroy the uh, voting power of middle America that supports the Constitution and the free market system. Everything Obama is doing is an assault on middle America an attempt to degrade and destroy it to pave the way for their control of information. That's right. When he's hanging out with billionaires in San Francisco, he says, we're going to get these better clingers. We're going to. I mean, we are their enemy. Exactly. This has been the plan from the get-go. Everything is meant uh, flooding the country with illegals. It's meant to degrade middle America that they know will never buy into the progressive it's a military nonsense. operation. Cloud and Pevin. Joel Gilbert, folks, should get the film or they just don't care. I mean, it's not even about the money, folks. I know it's free on the Internet. Some people, I mean, you just need to get the DVD, give it to friends and family. Every tool to wake folks up that capitalism, freedom of choice, free will is under attack by a bunch of snot-nosed totalitarians. And if we don't stand up and say no to them, we deserve what we get. Joel Gilbert, thank you. Thank you. I'm going to come back with phone calls in two final segments.